because we've used that one. Okay. okay. Um, the next talk is going to introduce another expansion box that plugs into Project Olympus family. Um, we have another collaboration with our colleagues from Quanta, and Bruce and Sage are going to cover that. Please. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Bruce Hawk. I'm a senior mechanical engineer with Microsoft. Um, I'm going to be presenting today with uh, Sage Chi with Quanta on uh, the Project Olympus JBOD. So we, uh, we developed a 4U JBOD. Um, has 88 hot plug HDDs, um, N plus one uh, dual rotor fans, N plus N redundant three phase 1650 watt hot swap PSUs. We developed the enclosure with Quanta and the PSUs with Artisan. It's a drawer based design so we facilitate full cold aisle serviceability. Um, other cool features are that uh, obviously it integrates into our Project Olympus infrastructure through the universal PDU. Um, uh, the box runs on OpenBMC. So we use the BMC uh, to really improve the functionality of the box. So one of the cool things that we do with this box is actually we're able to gather hard drive temperatures directly and use that information to build a really efficient um, thermal algorithm. Um, we also have the capability to, talk, to toggle on and off hard drive power. Um, we, found that, uh, we found that we were seeing a, a very high rate of drive failures um, that weren't actually real drive failures. So we would take, we would, these drives would fail in the field, at least our enclosures would tell us that they were failed. We would send them back to the manufacturer and they would tell us, well, there's nothing wrong with these. And they would want to send them back. And so actually uh, power cycling the hard drives actually can have a healing effect on the drives and so we have that capability to do that at the data center through the BMC. So the box is managed by um, the Project Olympus server so external head nodes so we uh, we have four SAS expanders in the box and uh, so we have uh, by four 22 hard drive base planes. So you can actually configure the box with uh, one head node, two head nodes, or four head nodes. So depending on what type of application you want to use it in, hot storage, cold storage, uh, the enclosure actually is capable of implementing that. Other cool uh, facts, um, so the, the chassis can uh, support up to 1.2 petabytes per chassis. That's with a 14 terabyte hard drive, which actually equates to 9.6 petabytes per rack with, uh, in our cold storage configuration with eight JBODs in a rack. So we support SMR, Hammer, and 12 gigabit SAS single port um, HDDs. So a lot of flexibility with this box. Uh, um, you know, we really wanted to focus on flexibility, serviceability, and of course, performance. So other really cool features about this box, things that we take pride in with this box, um, are one that we can maintain less than 5% performance degradation on all hard drives. Um, we also maintain less than or equal to 51 degrees C uh, maximum case temperature on our hard drives. We'll get into a little bit more of those details later in the slides. So another key thing that we wanted to focus on with this box was serviceability. So all of our hot swappable components are toolless accessed. Um, that includes the hard drive carrier, or the hard drive, the power supplies, which are redundant, and also the fan modules. Each one of these components have LEDs for quick failed component identification. So, you know, we really wanted to, to limit downtime in the data center. L less downtime is going to improve our customer experience. So, we really wanted to focus on going back to, you know, the, the, the original concepts of, you know, data center architecture and 
build in serviceability at scale. It was really important to us with this product. So as mentioned before, full cold aisle serviceability. So you're, another really cool thing about this box is you're actually able to, um, you're actually able to service all the active PCBAs while the unit's in the rack in the cold aisle. So you can essentially build the entire JBOD in the rack. It's, it, it's a really cool feature. So uh, those boards include the BMC, our front uh, DC PDB, um, and also the four expander trays, which also act as our hard drive base planes. Um, I'm going to let Sage talk about this section. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, my name is Sage. Uh, I'm a hardware engineer from Quanta. So our team worked uh, very hard uh, with uh, Bruce and Microsoft team to on this uh, Olympus JBAR project. So for uh, Olympus uh, JBAR, uh, how we design, actually we implement some uh, different feature and to help uh, to improve the single integrity and serviceability and thermal efficiency and cost. So the first thing is uh, we use the, the standard external mini says a cable route directly uh, into the enclosure. So it means we don't need the uh, uh, multi-interconnector in between. So we can have the improved the uh, integrity. And also we uh, limit the need to by using the retimer between the expander and host. And also, we don't need to use the ultra low loads uh, PCB material. So the first thing we uh, just route the uh, mini says a uh, cable directly to the enclosure. So uh, when you assemble the the J bar into the rig, you can just take the cable, connect to the hose, HBA car or rig car. Okay. So no additional, no need to uh, uh, assemble another. Uh, says cable uh, from host to JBA. Just leverage the JBA, extend it, the mini sets cable. And the second is uh, the static lead and uh, the out, outer uh, chassis share design. So for this design, we can support uh, to have all commodity have the uh, Serviceability from top, uh, top, top size. So we can service the post prime, hard disk, and the fan module uh, within the, this design. And also for, just uh, Bruce mentioned, we can also access the hardy board from the side wall and the other board from top side. And this also can facilitate the blind mate with the, the rig integration by the static lead and all the chassis share design. And the third one is that we put, uh, we have the side loaded independent uh, for identical uh, hard disk uh, expander board. So we put the expander onto the hardy board. So uh, that means we can uh, leave the maximum the space for heating design. So you can see we put the uh, uh, expander chip on hardy board, so we have we can leverage the maximum the many uh, uh, space for the heating design and get the better uh, thermal cooling and high uh, thermal efficiency. Also, to put the chip on board, uh, we can reduce the interconnector and also improve the signal integrity. So they the three a key uh, implementation we put, we implement on this uh, for uj bar uh, to have better uh, single integrity and serviceability and thermal and also have cost saving. So that from the hardware point of view uh, for this project. And I'm not sure Bruce will have any comment on this. Yeah, on yeah, this. so um, really just wanted to point out that with these features, you know, we, we spent a lot of time thinking about how to, how to quickly integrate um, into our rack. So that static lid outer chassis shell design really enables us, enables us to essentially uh, plug, 
take the, take the enclosure directly out of the box, lift it into our rack, and blind mate into that PMDU. So really quick integration. Also, um, because the drawer pulls out and there is no additional lid, um, it becomes really much easier to service in the field. So if you've got a unit high up in the rack, you're not having to open a big barn door lid or remove a lid, right? You're just having to pull the drawer out just as far as you need to, to service the components that you need. So that was uh, a really cool feature that we implemented. It also, you know, it enabled us to, I'll go back to this, to this image here, um, and it really enabled us to um, make the cable management very simple. So again, the data center is not going to have to deal with, with external cable arms and, and things like that. It's all done internally in this shell. So really, really uh, we'll speed up our rack integration. Another thing I did want to point out here, because we're able to put the because we put the SAS expanders on the bottom of the boards, enab enabled us to spread our hard drives further apart, which really reduced our airflow impedance. Because uh, that cooling efficiency was also very important to us, improve our reliability. So I'll turn it back over to Sage. You go over the firmware architecture. Okay, so for firmware uh, topology, you can see here the broad diagram. So we <clears throat> have a BMC, uh, it's responsible for the whole JBAR uh, management. So it, it can uh, get the hard disk information uh, from our expander and also can uh, monitor the power supply uh, and all hardware controller on each board, also directly to control the fan. And here, that is the, the UR signal between the SAS expander and BMC, that for console redirection. So outside the box, uh, actually the PMDU, the rack management can do the, the, the management switch and talk to the BMC to do the whole chasing management as well. Another from the handle side, also we can support the, the SES, SMP, so as buffer command. So from the handle side also can communicate with the, the sales expander. So that's very straightforward. And another one is we let the feature from the PMDU can just uh, power on of the BMC. So even the BMC uh, with the, the light hand up or uh, uh, shut down, we still can keep the whole J-Bar running. So we have the feature uh, to uh, just keep other power on and to power off a BMC power rate only and still let the whole system run as well. Okay, so that is for the firmware uh, high level broad diagram and architecture. Yeah, another uh, really, so again, back to performance. Um, our thermal ar architecture in this box is, is really something we're proud of. Um, so again, 88 um, hard drives in this box. We can support up to 14 watt hard drives. Um, the expanders are also 16 watts. Um, so what we did that was really cool because our data center has limitations on how much CFM per kilowatt we can, um, we can manage. We had to make really good use of our of the airflow that airflow budget that was given to us. So one of the things that we did in order to reduce that case temperature in the rear row um, was we implemented uh, cold air bypass channels. Okay, because you got this big array of drives, all the drives in front of the ones in the back are are preheating, right? So one of the ways we what what we did to solve that is we created we've created bypass channels, so we're actually injecting cold air into our rear rows. And we're actually able to um, control that specifically to, to hot spots in, in, in the box and really reduce that, that case temperature on the hard drives. So um, we support 35, C degree, uh, 35 degree C inlet ambient temperature. Um, uh, we have four N plus one dual rotor fans. Um, and it's also important to point out that all of our performance targets are supported in the failed rotor case. So um, when we say N plus one, really it's, it's eight rotors uh, plus, plus one, right? So seven plus one rotors. Um, 
and obviously, so we can support a full fan fail, um, but of course, that, that 51 degree C performance target is gonna, could potentially go a little bit above that in that case. But we, we consider that a, a dual fa failure. Um, uh, so we support five minute service. So with the drawer fully extended, uh, um, you can actually have the box in that position on for five minutes before you start to see any adverse effects on the, on the temperature. And that's plenty of time to service any of the tools components. Um, another cool thing to point out is our power supplies, the way we position them in the front of the box. They're getting cold aisle air directly, no preheating involved. They're not preheating any, any other components. The, the airflow management for the power supplies is completely isolated. And so you may be asking yourselves, you know, do we have uh, any issues in the, in the rear row as far as hard drive performance? This is another thing that we really focused on because we really wanted to maintain performance for that improved customer experience. So, you know, something that we did to, to really make sure that we, we enabled this was, was is hard drive isolation. Really eliminate any external vibrations that the, that the drives may see. So where do we see external vibrations? We see that from typically fans and nearby hard drives. So the nearby hard drives, it's typically an easy problem to solve. Add a grommet or two, have a rigid chassis structure. Um, that really wasn't where our challenge was. The challenge was in that rear row near the fans. So what I want to point out to you guys is we did a lot of investigation here because we were seeing some negative effects from the, the high speed fans on the hard drives. Typically the hard drives can't handle high frequency vibrations very well. So we see degraded performance. So what do we do about that? Well, one is we wanted to eliminate the mechanical, the mechanical transmission, right? So we wanted to, to verify that. So what you see in this graph is um, the, you see the purple and green lines. You see a lot of amplitude on those, on those lines. And the lower lines are um, uh, no I.O. running, and those are just the fans running. So you can see that um, running I.O. actually has a greater effect. And so what we wanted to do is confirm that, well, are we, uh, how much of that is actually coming from the fans, though, right? So um, and just turning off the drives didn't really give us that full answer. So another, another thing that we did was, well, let's run the drives and let's turn off the fans. And what you see here is almost an identical plot. So you see a couple peak frequencies, but we find that that doesn't have a, a huge effect. But what you don't see in this plot is the higher frequency range. And that higher frequency range is really what can really negatively affect the hard drive performance. So um, we did that, we, we battled that a couple ways. One is with our really efficient thermal design. So because we inject that cold air into the rear row, we're able to keep the fan speeds low. And um, so we don't, you don't see is that, that high frequency impact. However, because we wanted to make this box flexible and built for the future, and for the future, you know, we, we could potentially see these higher power drives and we want to implement these, these chassis in the worst case environments and allow it to allow the fans to fail. And, and we find that there could, and we, but we also want to keep the hard drive temperatures low because we want to keep that reliability on those drives. So, um, in, in those in those really rare cases, we can see performance degradation. So, what do we do about that? So, we do have we are working on a an acoustic attenuation subassembly that's going to go between the fans and the hard drives. So, this is actually a really cool thing um, that we're working on. Um, we actually are utilizing 3M thin slit foam, which is a, a, a very uh, unique use case for this foam. So we see this foam get used in aerospace applications and automobile applications. We also, actually also see it get used in um, ski gloves for insulation. Well, um, we saw that the, the opportunity to use this foam in this use, or in this, in this situation, uh, you know, that you'll, you'll see also from 3M, they have their EAR division and they, they actually offer a sound acoustic um, material and they ask us, well, why don't you just use that material? Well, with these high frequency, high, high sound pressure um, cases and environments, we find that you actually need really thick P3 
pieces of this material. And what happens with that really thick material is it, it, it's essentially kindling inside the box. It doesn't meet our flammability standards. And we found that this material actually um, has a much better uh, flame capability. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's flame retardant. It doesn't, it doesn't want to just catch fire. And that was really important to us. So, um, so it's, a, it's a new use in this application, but we're really excited about it. And uh, we really think it's going gonna, it's gonna to do well for us. So. Um, so just, again, to go over, do a quick overview, um, really hit our achievements. So maintaining that low hard drive case temperature. Um, developing an architecture that allows for infield servicing, cold aisle infield servicing. Um, providing that no more than 5% hard drive performance degradation in all of our operating conditions. Um, and also achieving that 12 gigabit SAS signal speeds without using any repeaters. So. Those are all of my slides, so I guess I'll open it up to, to questions. Thank you, yeah. Oh, yeah. One, one second, I'll get you the microphone. Yeah, how many paths are there to the, each SAS drive? SAS drive normally comes with two. How many, how many fans are there? No, how many paths? Oh, so there's four. There's four, but there, there are four, four port per, per SAS, right? Expander, yeah. so there's 16 ports. Single, single port. Oh, single, single port, port, right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. So what's the total depth of the box? So our rack's 1.2 meter. The box, um, after plugging into the PMDU, uh, is right around 1,100 millimeters. So it's pretty long. You talked about the chassis being blind plug, but I think you also have the SAS cables coming in through the back of the chassis over the cable, cable chain and then down into the board. So that suggests that after you put the chassis into the rack, you have to reach around and pull the cables around the back and up to the sides and around to the front again? No, so um, here actually I can, I can go back up to that section. I can show you again, make it more clear for you. Um, go, yeah, that's a good one. So the, the SAS cables actually enter, enter the box right here, right? And they actually go through this chain and then plug into our uh, BMC board and our midplanes. So one, uh, it, also you have this, this rear PDB, AC PDB, okay? So there's a cable and then there's also a cable arm you'll see underneath the fans, okay? So when you get this shell, so this is actually a transparent view, right, on the side here. So all of the cables are contained within the shell, okay? The only cables that are actually exiting the box are these external SAS cables, okay? So you plug in, in this, this board blind mates into that PMDU, then you lock this shell into, there's a couple tabs that interface with our mounting rails. You lock that shell into the rack, and then you're able to move this drawer freely from the shell. Does that make sense? So two part question. One is if you've got a fixed SAS cable, what's the length on that outside the rack or outside the enclosure? Uh, outside the enclosure, um, 0.5 meters, yeah. Point? Point 0.5. So yeah, so, uh, so we're able to, the box can be configured with up to four head nodes. So it's essentially just long enough to reach up to the four head nodes. Okay. Um, and the second question is, you've got your expanders uh, soldered down to your base plane. So does that mean the base planes are a cold swap item, or are they even swappable? They are swappable. They are, um, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, they're serviceable from the side. So we're still in our engineering development phase. So uh, we're actually going to run a couple tests to see how quickly typically it takes to service these because you have to lift the, lift the drives up to, to clear the base plane. Um, it may take you longer than five minutes and we want to make sure we give, and if so, if, if, it, if, if it's unreasonable to expect the tech to do it in a five minute period, then, um, then we won't claim it as hot swap. But other than that, you know, other than that reason, it, there is no, re you know, 
it could be a hot swappable component. Okay, other but, than but the it, fact that you lost 22 drives. Right, yeah. Okay. The, other, the other nodes wouldn't be affected. You know, uh, the f hard drive five performance, five percent performance drop is really amazing. Yeah. So, to achieve that goal, wh what's the fan speed look like? The forty percent full fan speed, or so uh, we don't start to see performance degradation until um, into the uh, near eighty percent PWM range, actually, because we keep a sufficient distance from the fans to the hard drives. Okay. The second question is that you know. Do you need to limit your hard drive model or type to achieve that goal? No. No need to? No. Oh. No. Thank you. Great questions. Any more? So are you going to stick with just hard drives, or is there a plan for SSDs? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, it's probably a better question for Mark, actually. <laughs> well, uh, you, you, so 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 SSD. So you, uh, we, there is a SAS. There are SAS connected SSDs, right? And our three and a half inch drive carrier is fully capable of is uh, of of of, uh, of housing that. But uh, so there are, there are other electrical challenges like w associated to that. But it's it's within our scope to do that. I think everybody is hungry, right? <laughs> well, thank you very much. It was an awesome presentation. Come, come back at 1 o'clock for another expansion box.